okay, I think we'll we'll go ahead and get started, um, and then people can filter in still, uh, you know, as as we've gotten started here. So, just want to uh, thank everybody for joining today, um, including Richard and Brian from uh, SD Wind. Uh, Richard will be given the the presentation today. Um, and both he and Richard, or both he and Brian, will be available at the end um, for any questions um, you all might have. So um, I'll just go ahead and, and kick it over to Richard um, to go ahead and get everything started. And I think there's a couple of slides at the beginning just uh, for me to talk about Renvu, and um, and then uh, it'll be uh, all yours, Richard. Hey. Cool. So uh, just a quick uh, introduction uh, in case anybody's unfamiliar with Renvu. Um, we're a renewable energy distributor founded in 2012 and based out of Mountain View, California, um, but we have fulfillment centers located in California, Texas, and New Jersey. Um, we're a full service distributor um, with supplying, uh, engineering, permitting, uh, as well as, as all the equipment you might need for a number of different um, solar, wind, and, and energy storage project, projects. Um, in addition, our sales team is comprised of engineers, um, so it's, it's something we, we wanted to have real uh, hard technical expertise on all the products we're carrying. So we have a, our sales team uh, comprised of engineers who can provide that sort of first level of technical support you might need. In addition, we've got a number of free online tools um, you can use to design projects, get quick quotes, and then, um, and then speak with one of our sales team members to, to revise as needed. Um, some of the uh, installation services um, we offer on-site analysis, professional engineering services. Um, so you need PE stamps for any any project, both structural and electrical, um, uh, logistics and warehousing solutions, environmental analysis, um, and then we also um, provide uh, sort of a, a, an outlet if you have excess inventory that you need to, to sell back uh, for projects that that you might. Um, uh, have had leftovers or, or um, things like that. So cool. So that's just a quick overview of Renvu and then, uh, yeah, Richard, it's uh, all yours. Thanks, Nick. So I'd like to introduce you to uh, SD Wind. Uh, we are a manufacturer of a very unique small wind turbine. Uh, we are involved in a number of sectors. Uh, you can see there, it varies right from remote to domestic, covering all areas uh, globally, harsh environments, uh, including offshore is also. We were established 1980 uh, as Proven Energy at that time, and we were Kingspan Wind, for about seven years from 2011 to 2018 and then we basically bought the business back and became SD Wind Energy. We are the UK's most successful small wind company uh, in supplying and we have accreditations globally all over uh, the UK, Denmark, uh, Korea, just about to be certified in Japan. And the main one, obviously, for yourselves is that we are certified with the SWCC. The turbine and the, the company was founded by Gordon Proven, hence Proven uh, Energy. A uh, bit of a play in words there, but uh, Gordon actually worked in the the nuclear industry uh, for a number of years. Uh, was Babcock's top technician and commissioned uh, several coal power fire stations, but then commissioned uh, nuclear power stations in the UK and in Libya at one point. Uh, he didn't like what he saw within the industry and walked away and decided that renewables would be the way forward for energy in the, in the future. We have well over 5,000 uh, turbines installed globally. Uh, you can see there, uh, we have them at uh, Alaska and also 
the Antarctic as well. We we are installed in every continent and now we are the UK's only certified turbine uh, that has been manufactured here. We manufacture everything in-house uh, and in the design. The unique design which I'll, I'll go into uh, sets us apart in that we, we would never ever shut down in any form of, of wind. So we led the way in the certification in the UK and another uh, feather in the cap is that we have ATEX certification which is for hazardous areas whereby the turbine cannot cause any sparks for explosion or go above 120 degrees at any point. So that's a specialised uh, version of our turbines that we, we manufacture and we place in oil and gas uh, mining whereby there could be problems with dust and also car four quarts uh, pump stations where again any any danger of sparks could cause uh, an issue. Because we manufacture the, the turbine ourselves and we build the generators ourselves, we can produce a number of uh, voltages, uh, models of different voltage, 24, 48, right up to 300 volts for Grid Connect. And as I said, it's designed to class one, which, and we warranty to, to 70 meters a second uh, wind speed. And it never ever shuts down in any, any wind. So we produce power continuously. Range of turbines that we have, we have the three kilowatt, the SD3, the six kilowatt SD6, and the SD3 is the EX, which is the ATEX certified for hazardous areas. The, we also, uh, of these versions, are able to offer a cold climate, which can withstand minus 60 degrees C and marine grade options whereby we use them for lighthouse boards, uh, offshore platforms, whereby the, the spring mechanism that we use rather than being stainless steel is Inconel, which is uh, corrosion proof. As I, as I mentioned, we, we manufacture in-house. Uh, we try not to outsource anything. We try to source responsibly and locally. Uh, similarly with uh, any additional equipment that we require, we try and source the, the towers locally, uh, controllers so that the, the, the transportation and carbon footprint is kept to a minimum as well. And also for costs uh, for the end customer. We, we are ISO uh, accredited 2015. We are MCS, which is the microgeneration scheme for the UK for renewables and the ATEX. Each one of those certificates carries with itself an annual audit of the installations <clears throat> and also the manufacturing facility, quality records and traceability of all the components that we manufacture and assemble. Probably what I should mention as well is we are based in Scotland, so it's uh, it's all manufactured uh, locally here. The sectors and applications that we are involved in, uh, off-grid, especially it's for telecoms. We do microgrids, whereby we supply communities with distributed generation. The oil and gas platforms that I mentioned, which are unmanned platforms mainly, uh, with no other power provision other than the renewables, which would be a solar wind hybrid with no diesel backup. And then just the agri, small farms, small holdings, holiday homes uh, for remote power. 
the design uh, has of the turbine has came about after a few years in the early 80s. The, the, the first turbine was standard upwind turbine with a gearbox and Gordon Proven at that time uh, came up with a, an idea of the controlling the, the power available in the wind and the speed of the turbine such that it would never ever require to be braked. That came from the ideas of from sailing and from medieval times when uh, there was a large number of uh, windmills at that time. The windmills used to use a sail as a boat and when the wind got got stronger and too severe they would pull the sail in and control the power at that point so from there the idea of reducing the swept area of the rotor and controlling the pitch by the speed of the the rotor meant that we we basically flipped the the turbine round to make it downwind so it gave us the advantage for the control and from that we we knew the power and the speed so we created our own generator and designed a permanent magnet generator to suit that rotor so there was no requirement then for a gearbox so you got greater efficiency more reliability, less parts that could go wrong, and took all motor drives, everything out, and the yaw mechanism became passive. So basically the, the turbine itself is completely passive and is only controlled by the wind itself. So as you can see, uh, where the generator is marked and the arrow in that direction is the direction actually of the wind coming onto the turbine. It's a three phase permanent magnet generator and we always rectify to DC to either charge batteries uh, through an MPPT controller or into a grid connect inverter. In the head itself, the generator, we spin the, the magnets not the alternator. So there's no requirement for any brush gear or uh, that within the generator. The slip ring unit that you see there is only to stop the down cable uh, down the tower from twisting uh, due to the, the, the yawing of the turbine through time. The, the main shaft bearings are the sealed for life their roller bearings self-aligning, so they basically flex along with the shaft. So as any shaft at any speed would, almost like a skipping rope, so it takes all the flex out of the, the frame and takes the fatigue elements out there. Now, we have had uh, studies done for uh, our offshore whereby if the turbine was running completely out of balance, the, the fatigue, there is no catastrophic failure can happen on the frame. Uh, that could be caught well within the maintenance schedule. Each blade is individually mounted on a rubber hinge, which, is a, which we manufacture in-house again, which is a specialized polyurethane rubber uh, and on each blade there is also a spring, a torsional spring which has a predefined load and as the wind increases in uh, power the spring will then start to stretch and the blades then cone downwind reducing the swept area. This slide demonstrates the, the way that the, the blade would pitch. Uh, as the, the turbine spins faster, the blade, the centrifugal force pulls on the blade and the blade 
pitches to stall, so that controls the speed of the the turbine. For an SD3, the maximum RPM would be 350 RPM, and on a six kilowatt, it would be maximum of 250 RPM. Coupled with that, when the wind gets stronger and the blades are pitching, that's when the springs begin to stretch. And we actually see there the blades beginning to cone and bend downwind and reduce that, that element. Wind is a cube law. So if you double the wind speed, you get eight times the power. Hence that normal turbines, you would have to, as the wind increases on a large utility scale turbine, it would have to probably break and stop at roughly about 25 meters a second. Uh, some some are, are, are more, less than that, 20 meters a second. Other turbines in the smaller scale, such as ours, would try and furl out the wind uh, or have a tail. That then causes uh, imbalance and turbulence to, to be created uh, and put strain on the bearings and the mechanism on the, the tower. With our, our design, it's very, very good for turbulent sites. It still performs. And because each blade works independently, it suits itself as well for uh, cliff edges where there might be some vortex winds, winds as well. This slide just shows the, the technical data and the, the AAP of the three kilowatt turbine. Uh, the rotor diameter is, is 3.9 meters on the, the three kilowatt. And probably the, the blades themselves are quite unique in that the blades are manufactured from a material known as Twintex, that actually is a thermal plastic that we use, composite material. It looks like carbon fiber, but it, it's actually a glass fiber polypropylene weave. And it allows the blade to flex. And on normal blades of fiberglass, wood, and carbon fiber, when you put the, the material under strain, you actually see, once you analyze the fibers, you'll see that they've been under strain and there's some damage, uh, which varies between glass fiber. There is, there is quite a wide hysteresis there once it's been uh, bending stress there. With Twintex, it actually reforms because of the, the plastic and reforms to narrow the hysteresis once it's been under strain. Uh, this material is now used quite regular in car bumpers, uh, bus bumpers, uh, floor pans, and certain vehicles as well, where impact, it can absorb the impact and then reform. Details of the six kilowatt uh, that you can all see there. The other main thing is we offer a full manufacturing five-year warranty and which we, we can circulate. It's a, it's, it's a good warranty. There's no hidden clauses in there uh, whereby some, some other manufacturers, if the wind blows the warranties uh, void, we, as I say, we warranty right up to 70 meters a second uh, there. Various tower sizes as well. Uh, and we are currently looking at some larger towers uh, for, the, for the US. The picture that you see there is a, a monopole gas platform, uh, wind and solar hybrid system. It's quite unique and it, it's specialized. There's, there's, there's not many... Uh, 
other applications for this, just to demonstrate that we do, as a, a company, we are also very much uh, an engineering company. And when Shell and BP came to us and said that they wanted to put renewables onto their platforms, we had to go away and design this. This is something that we, we look at. We've done it for the telecoms industry as well. For LTEC, we designed a generator that works with their charge controllers for Telefonica. So we are open to continual improvement as well. Most of the towers that we supply, we like to work on the, the maintenance to be done on the ground. So hydraulic towers and uh, winchable towers with gin poles. Uh, for the installation itself, to keep costs down, can be done with a simple tractor, uh, fort lift, uh, things slot together. The weights of the, the turbine head, the SD3 is 300 ki kilograms and the uh, SD6 is 680 kilograms. So all parts, we try and keep each component less than a ton, so it's, it's readily available that handling, standard handling equipment is all that you require. On the, the maintenance of the turbines, the maintenance is every two years, not every year. So within the warranty period, uh, you have three service visits from uh, your installer. We work with a number of uh, manufacturers. The list shown there, uh, there is uh, others that we would also work with, but full range, we, for the, the grid tie applications, we can work with a number of inverters and we put a small control module in front of the inverter that allows the power curve to be input. So a standard solar inverter can be used with our wind turbines. On the hybrid, the, the picture that you see there is, uh, that's the Queen Elizabeth Antarctic Research Station. It's powered by solar and wind. Uh, obviously in the, uh, the winter months there is there is no no sun whatsoever there. They used to shut the the station six months a year, but now they are because they, they have the, the the track record now. They are occupying the station for the full twelve months of the year. Uh, everything that you see within that picture with Antarctica. When the project is finished, everything has to go back to uh, virgin soil and no traceability of, of, of anything being there. The building itself is aluminium clad, but it's a, a wooden building and the, the turbines are rock anchored that can then be uh, taken out. So there's no concrete foundations or anything. That's another application that we do have. We can either rock anchor or we have with our towers the above ground foundation that allows uh, no digging uh, or concrete to be transported. So that's that's good in very remote locations and locations where there, there possibly is a, a permafrost. We offer, uh, it's a free service uh, in that we can do with a wind prospecting tool, we do desktop analysis uh, globally, and you see an example there of a uh, small island, 7.4 uh, average wind speed. We show the, the wind rows so we can see the best sighting of the turbine. And on the monthly chart, we can then do an analysis on the uh, load sharing and how we can actually design a hybrid system or battery size or with the standard grid connect, 
uh, and microgrid, how much diesel could be saved if a turbine was applied there. As I say, that is a that is a free service that, that we offer, uh, and we would always, before installing or selling any turbine, uh, have that 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 done for the the customer, so that the there is the the element of the expectation and that the the right size of turbine is actually being applied. We tend as well if we see that the wind speed is is less than four meters a second uh, at 20 meters hop height, we would always recommend that uh, our turbine wouldn't be uh, suitable for that. So there's no uh, expectation of the customer that the turbine, if we if we sell the turbine and install a turbine, the turbine will perform. Just to, to wrap things up on the, the presentation, just a couple of uh, examples of systems that we, we, we have done. Uh, this is a, a microgrid system, which was a, the community uh, bought the island uh, and then decided to put their own basic uh, infrastructure and power supply. So there is a, a battery bank, a centralized battery bank. There is a diesel backup, um, but the main power comes from the four SD6 turbines. There's a 50 kilowatt solar array, and there's also utilizing the, the good Scottish weather. Uh, there's a hydro system, because there's always plenty of, of water and rain. Uh, it has been hugely successful. Uh, and the community works together in that they each have their own consumption meter and provide uh, payments from what they're consuming from their, their own power. Uh, it keeps the, the system within the maintenance, the upkeep and the expansion. The, the actual population has increased since they've put this in because People were leaving the island, uh, but now uh, the community is doing very well and a number of small businesses have came from this, this mini grid. We can claim that to have the, the biggest off-grid fleet of turbines uh, due to the number that we have located in the, the Falklands, the Falklands is a fantastic wind regime, though, uh, with average wind speeds of 12 metres a second. Uh, the wind rose as well, the wind direction is, is basically one direction, uh, and it blows nearly all year round. Uh, other turbines that have been down there, they do tend to struggle, uh, similar to what we have in the Faroe Islands, uh, in the North Sea, uh, Shetlands and Orkneys. The, the Falklands Development Council uh, early 90s took a number of units uh, down there, different manufacturers of turbines, generators, uh, batteries and inverters. Uh, they took the, the SD3 turbine, uh, trace inverter at that time and uh, Rolls batteries, no sorry, Vata batteries at that time and gave a grant and allowed people to install a remote system. The problem being was diesel transportation across the islands uh, was very difficult, obviously causing spillages and uh, just the, the, the infrastructure wasn't there for uh, transportation. So there's 130 standalone systems. Uh, most are, I would say of, of that 120 uh, don't even have solar. The wind is that good. It, it basically just uh, works on the turbines themselves and uh, any excess power is stored in the battery. But also when the batteries are full, it's diverted into heating the properties. 
So that it's also helped with their infrastructure of the of the buildings. And thanks for your time uh, and the presentation. Just wanted to introduce the product and the, the company. And I think now uh, we're open the floor for any questions that anyone may have. So back over to you, Nick. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we've got a couple um, so far that have popped in. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A section or the chat. But um, I think the first one we had was from uh, Paul Farron, um, wanting to know what is the lowest speed wind that will produce power and how much power does it produce at the lowest power producing speed? Okay, well, the, the turbine actually has a cut in wind speed of uh, five point, I'm sorry, 2.5 meters a second. And at that point, it will probably be producing roughly about 10 watts. And as it increases, uh, as I said, it's a, a cube law. So we rate the turbines at 11 meters a second. So at 11 meters a second, you're getting, uh, it's actually 3.2 kilowatts and it's uh, six kilowatts at the, for the SD6. But a low, low kit in because there's no gearbox or anything, it's quite quite an ease to for a startup. I hope that answers the question. And I think second part to that was, um, which I don't I don't know if I heard, but um, at what speed wind speed does it produce three kilowatts? That's eleven meters a second. A second. Okay, cool. I was to say I think I heard you say it, but I wasn't sure. Uh, okay, and I think we got um, Richard Brown is raising his hand, so I'm just going to allow him to talk real quick and, and ask his question. Okay, Richard, you should be, uh, I think if you unmute yourself, you should be able to ask. Hi, thank you. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Richard. Okay, great. Uh, you know, for us, uh, for us, uh, <laughs> not sufficiently uh, metricized. Could you translate that 11.0 uh, meters a second to uh, 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 miles per second, miles per hour? Uh, I think it, uh, that's, that's 20 miles per hour, I believe. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, let's see. I think we've got a couple other questions that popped in. Um, uh, let's see, Shantanu is asking about the height of the wind turbines. Um, I think that the different tower options. Yeah, we just now we have uh, for the for the three, a six, a nine, a 15 meter. Uh, so what's that, 45 foot and a 60 foot tower available. And on the six, it would be a 30 foot, uh, 45 foot, 60 foot, and an 80 foot tower available. Cool, great. Um, looks like Doug was also asking, he didn't see a wind power versus, or wind speed versus power curve in the presentation. And was asking if um, there was one that existed um, that could be distributed. Yeah, we can we can distribute that, we, that's, that's not an issue. Cool. I think we can go ahead and probably we can talk afterwards and send that out along with the the recording um, uh, and another email. Um, and he also was wondering um, at 15 degrees Fahrenheit, how well do the blades return to shape? Yeah, completely. That that's uh, what I was mentioning uh, on regards to the the low temperature options that that we have and with the the twin techs. When we use the for the low temperature and cold climate. We, we always recommend having the, the black polyprop blades uh, just for any thermal absorption there. The other really good thing with, and again, we'll distribute the picture. We have uh, turbines that have been through ice storms and you can see the tower is completely frozen and covered, uh, but the, the turbine head itself is completely clear of any snow or ice. Uh, on there, mainly because the the surface, the polyprop, nothing really sticks there, and well, with the with the thermal co uh, conductivity and absorption, it helps there. But as I say, we can we can demonstrate that with some 
we'll circulate some photographs of that. Excellent, great. Um, looks like we got another, uh, we got a handful of questions. So we'll just kind of go through them here. Um, but uh, what's the usual service life, both in non-marine and marine environments, and is maintenance intensive from Gustavo? The the maintenance itself, uh, because of the simplicity, we, we try to we try to make the turbine that because it's going into remote areas that it's uh, very simple to maintain. So there's no gearbox, as I said. Uh, the service is basically uh, grease the bearings, uh, which is minimal uh, grease. Uh, it's a few mils of, of grease into the bearings there. There is four rubber bushes that we, we, we say should be replaced every second ser service. So every three to four years, you should replace those uh, little rubber rollers that are just down on, on the tower. And basically in, uh, the rest is inspection. We've got turbines that are over 25 years old. Uh, there's probably just now about 2000 turbines that are over uh, 12 years old. With what we, we see coming through, we see uh, at the 10 year mark, probably change the springs on the, the turbine. Other than that, uh, there's nothing really else that, that, that requires any, any maintenance or replacement. Uh, earlier today, actually, I had a, I had a call from someone that had a, that had a, a four three kilowatt turbines and the oldest was 25 years, the youngest was 18 years and the one at 18 years at, at that local property actually said hadn't been serviced for 10 years and was, was still running. So as I say, very, very simple design. So not, not much that can go wrong, even to the point of it's a, we have a, a disc brake uh, for uh, mechanically braking the turbine while you lower or you service and the brake pads on it, we, we, we chose general motor parts there because they're readily available worldwide and even after 20 years we, we now find that there is always readily even copies of, of the, the brake pads so uh, there is, isn't the, the element there that you know spares would actually run out. Great, excellent. Um, and it looks like we've got uh, Johnny, who's gonna. I'm gonna allow to talk here real quick, and um, he's got a question. So, uh, Johnny, you should be able to unmute yourself and, and ask your question real quick. Let's see. Or Okay, well, I think Johnny, my, I'm not sure. So we'll just go ahead and um, if you can unmute yourself, you can go and ask that question, Johnny, but we'll go ahead and jump into a, another one uh, we have over here, which was, um, I guess, just some some siding questions, which I think you had touched based um, in the webinar kind of about the, the siding um, services that you guys offer as well. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's, I guess, uh, one option there is to, to um, utilize that service. Um, I think there was another question um, that kind of touched base on that as well, but I'm not seeing it here. So um, we'll just hit a couple others. Um, what's the highest attained efficiency with the wind turbines? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. The highest attained efficiency? The right. I, I'm not sure if, if if the question is asking if how efficient the generator is or what we would term the power factor of the turbine, uh, whereby that means that over a set period of time, uh, how how close you have been for for instance for a six kilowatt the 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 amount of power that it's delivered within, uh, say, for a month, uh, has it achieved the full six kilowatts every minute of every hour uh, for that? The highest, well, first of all, if it's a generator, the generator is 92% uh, efficient 
for uh, the torque on the shaft and the power out. And on the power factor, we have achieved, uh, believe it or not, a 97% uh, power factor uh, last year on six kilowatt turbines that were installed in Shetland, whereby they run for the, the month and nearly averaged uh, 5.8 kilowatts continuous. Great. And then, Johnny, I think I saw you unmute yourself. Were you able to to uh, take care of that? Maybe not. Okay. We'll jump into another one. Um, I think I saw a question here just asking about any different software, like design software or um, uh, recommendations you might have as far as, as site design and, and things like that. Yeah. The, the on, on the, the site design, as I say, we would we would always uh, we'd do the desktop and then as it, as it ask for photographs of the site and, and analyze there. Uh, on software and sizing of batteries and things, we, we have our own uh, formulas and spreadsheets that we can uh, input the data. Uh, and if it's hybrids with the solar radiation as well, there's a standard uh, Homer systems and things there, so the, there is a, a variety. But we t we tend to 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 use our own uh, software there and uh, Excel spreadsheets with the, the formulas behind them that we can just input the data to that. Great, cool. And then Johnny, I see you're unmuted. Are you are you able to? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can okay, hear you now. Yes, uh, two questions. How many batteries does a 3KW system require? And the second question, do I need a licensed electrician to uh, hook up this system? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure with the, 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 the licensed electrician uh, for whatever state that you're in and what have you with the, the regulations there. But on the, the battery sizing, we would always recommend that the the minimum size of battery for the the three kilowatt turbine would be about uh, 450 to 500 amp hours minimum and the maximum would be around about the 2000 amp hours at 48 volts. Excellent, great. I think Gregory um, had a couple questions as well. One about the lifespan and reliability of the yaw bearings. And then um, the other being um, magnetic materials being sourced from Asia with current global conditions. Are there any problems with, you know, pricing or sourcing of, of any specific materials? Uh, well, firstly, the, the yaw bearings, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a roller bearing that we use self-aligning. Uh, there's no issues there uh, because the bearing is self-aligning and the race of the bearing, well, not the race, but the the mounting onto the the, the spigot, if you like, on, on the tower uh, allows uh, a couple of mil of movement. So there is no real uh, force. It's not like a standard slew ring bearing. Uh, that needs to be quite accurate and there's not much tolerance there. And it, if we go, I'll just quickly go back if people still got their, their screens there. If we look at the, the frame, we have the yaw bearing uh, at the head of the turbine, but the frame comes down and then we have what we're calling yaw rollers. So that's the four rubber bushes and, and that allows the force on the, the yaw bearing to be greatly reduced because you're talking about a meter down the tower uh, as stabilizing any thrust. So that helps to absorb uh, the, 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 rotate, the rotor thrust that, that's coming there. On the sourcing of the magnetic materials, a number of years ago, because all magnetic materials now basically come through China, uh, you had vari variances in the quality. We actually, 
We didn't go down the route of neodymium because neodymium can corrode from the inside out, so you don't know the the quality of the neodymium that you're you're getting there. We go with a, a ferrite magnet, uh, Y33 material, uh, which is a higher grade, but we buy the materials unmagnetized, so it's just the blocks, and we actually in our workshop we actually magnetize the the magnets so that we we know the flux density of each magnet going into the generator and that's recorded uh, when the guys are, are are actually building the the magnet plates so that we know that each generator uh, the flux density is the same so that allows us to set the air gaps within the generator well, when we're, we're building so that each generator has the same performance. Uh, on, the, on the supply front, we have uh, no issue there. We, we do, although original source is uh, China on these blocks, it is a, a UK company that we deal through uh, on the supply there. And we always hold a large stock of the, the magnetic blocks as well. Excellent. I think we'll go ahead and do uh, maybe one more question. And then any questions we didn't get to, um, we'll be able to, to reach out after uh, the fact and, and try and answer those uh, for everybody. Um, so uh, yeah, let's just see here. I think um, the, I guess, other, let's see here. Um, We've got a lot to choose from, but I think we'll probably hit just the, how do different turbines located on, on island salt air versus, uh, or I guess how are, how different are turbines located on island salt air versus inland? So I think this goes back to just the, the difference between your, um, the, the variations in the, the turbines, yeah. uh, for those. So, so um, on the islands with the, 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 the salt atmosphere, you, you obviously have, uh, a greater risk of corrosion, uh, well, corrosion and also erosion of the blades because of the salt within the air. Uh, the polypropylene uh, glass fiber blade uh, lends itself very well to deflecting the dust and salt particles. But on the, the more extreme sites, uh, we would always recommend uh, a, we'd put a leading edge tape on the blade, same as what you would use on helicopter blades and things. It's a clear uh, standard 3M product. Uh, and we would we would have that there for the, the, the erosion uh, because of salt atmosphere. The turbine, what I should have mentioned as well is that the turbine, it's quite heavy, as I said, 680 uh, kilos. Uh, it's all built from uh, 355 steel, and then everything is hot dip galvanized. So uh, even if you break apart the galvanized, there's a sacrificial corrosion, so you don't get, you'll get one spot of rust and some whitening, but it, it's not a painted surface whereby it can go underneath and then severely corrode. That includes the, the rotor. We used to have the rotor uh, simply powder coated, but now we have the the rotor as uh, hot zinc sprayed as well and then powder coated. So we, we take that through. The main difference with the marine to the standard in, inshore is the, the, the springs themselves. Stainless steel for inshore and uh, in canal and the uh, a more marine environment. Excellent, great. Um, cool, so I think we'll go ahead and, and wrap it up there. Um, like I said, I think there's still a lot of questions um, we didn't necessarily get to, but there's there's a handful of them um, that uh, I think if you if you wanna reach out to um, our sales engineers here at Renvu um, regarding um, integrating solar, wind, storage, that's something that they can, can have some in-depth conversations with you about. Uh, to kind of get into the the weeds about what the specifics are for different sites um, and how they might integrate um, as well. Um, I think we have some plans in the works to to do a more technical 
uh, webinar that gets in, in, you know, into the technical specifics of, of installation and um, the workings of, of the different uh, SD turbines. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, uh, as well, we'll be sending out, uh, uh, you know, a, a copy of, of this video um, uh, for your reference. Um, and I think we have, a, you know, one or two other uh, videos specifically related to, to wind and um, storage and solar integration as well on our YouTube page um, that you can take a look at. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so I want to thank Richard again for, for taking the time to, to come and uh, do the presentation, introduce SD, and, and answer a lot of really great questions. No, th thanks, guys, and thanks, thanks everyone, for, the, for your time this morning. Uh, hope I didn't speak too fast and the accent was too strong and everybody could understand me. Uh, and uh, look forward to the questions coming through. And uh, stay safe, guys. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, everybody, for attending.